Well, happy Friday. We are so excited guys, to be outside. Again, another one of our favorite topics. Time for another inspiration. Fascination. This is an all-time favorite. I know, okay, I fully realize we say it about everything. But this really is our favorite topic, you guys. Gardening. Gardening. It's so good. We have been gardeners for so long. Not long enough. No, not long enough. But we're going to be the kind of gardeners that are down on our hands and knees when we're 95. It's the truth. You know, I come into the studio some days and I look at my hands and go, oh my gosh, I know I showered we today, but I this. can't get the mulch and dirt yeah. out. It's yeah. just part of me now. I'm just dirty. Dur yeah, dirty under every, every little nail bed. You guys, this is so great because gardening is a passion of ours. Both of our parents are really into gardening, so I think we come by it. We come by it naturally. naturally. We're in Tracy's herb garden, and while it looks like it's just waking up, it it's is a sleepy garden it right is. now. It's it still was early the spring here. Perfect time for us to get in here and talk with you about our favorite things with yes. Tracy's herb garden and things yet to come. The bones, the architecture of a garden are so important, they and are. this is the perfect time of the year to talk about it because. While you can still see the bones of a garden when it's all lush and wonderful and wild, which is when we love it the most, it is as elegant all the other seasons of the year when it's quiet and sleeping. You can see all the little elements. And it's a perfect time to think through yes. what you need in your garden. Indeed it the is. The layers. Yes, and not only the layers that you place there, but I think we've both grown into some wisdom, which is don't We're feel learning. obligated in the fall to cut everything back. No, in fact, part I of the don't. bones, part yeah. of the bones are that there has been life there. Yes. You know, don't get too neat and tidy. No. And it also is kind of a relief, kind of like don't dust in the house. Well, don't tidy up too much out here. I try to think of the garden a lot like the forest too, because no one's cleaning up the forest. And so I always And think it's beautiful it's there. It's beautiful. And all that junk, I always think creates more composty goodness. It's the truth. You know, so right now this garden has been cut back a little. I just did that actually recently, but it was all, you know, wonderful grown over. But you know, it's so cool because there are layers in everything related to the garden. One of the things Sarah and I were just talking about is the fact that in a garden, there's the lower layer. It's very rainforest of us. <laughs> there's the lower layer. The topography. The, the canopy. That's true. That's but, true. You know, it's, it's fun to think of a garden like that because I think it helps you identify what you need. You know, Sarah and I are sort of, um, gosh, I hate to say this, but we're kind of mulch whores. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but we love mulch so much. See, it makes I us always wild. equate it to vacuuming. If oh, I get a yes. good thick layer of mulch out, mm. it's like I've just taken the vacuum and it's all tidy. Mounds and mounds of mulch are so good yes. to us. We love it. We everywhere. don't need diamonds, just a big six yard pile of fresh powdery mulch. Back that truck up and dump it on in. So along with the mulch, Trace, I have to say, I think yeah. you've done a beautiful job in a beautifully cottagey European way mm -hmm. of introducing some hardscape. You've got some yes. little pieces of flagstone. Yep. Very imperfectly laid. I love cottagey gardens, Frenchy yep. gardens. I'm not a... I know you're shocked by this. Not all about the perfect manicure. <laughs> it's too... She's not the horticulturist. Oh, culturalist. No, it's, it's just, it's too much stress and worry and bother to be perfect. At this point in your life. Yes, With the yes. garden, and this is perfect for you right now. Oh, I love it this way, yes. So the flagstone allows mm -hmm. beautiful little surprises to come up, your hollyhocks. It does, my hollyhocks, You know, in yeah. July, you guys, if you pull into Tracy and John's driveway. Madness. It is a chorus. It's mm -hmm. a riot of color. Mm -hmm. You it's know, there are hollyhocks 10 feet tall in every color of the rainbow. Yeah. And you know, I'll find her out here pulling them out Just and throwing them. them and throwing them. Like they're weeds. <laughs> yeah, they, we have too many, oddly. They're all antique hollyhocks and they grow like mad. It's like they're this crazy strain that grows everywhere. But it is wonderful because they end up scattered all through the garden. And, and that is what I love about having this area. You guys can't see it perfectly, I'm sure, but it's sort of a circle and then it kind of the stones And the little off. drifts of herbs follow the stones. And that was a nice layer. And then you add the mulch on top of it and it's so pretty. Some of the other pieces of architecture, I think, that yes. helps create. Yes. And one of the things that Sarah and I love at, at both of our homes is we yes. love creating um, garden rooms. I love if you it. Will. You know, there's something about feeling tucked in, mm -hmm. having a little structure to help you create your moment. You know, we talk about it in vignetting, yep. in decorating, and mm -hmm. it's the same in the garden. If yeah. you know that you're working within a little space, all of a sudden it's not quite so overwhelming. There's a lot of freedom in yeah. this. And you know, I just wanted to um, 
exactly. I have to hair in my mouth. One of the things I want to point out to you guys too is, you know, if you're not a gardener or if you don't have a space to create a garden room, think of your front porch or your back porch or your balcony, your walkway, your, your walkway. front stairs. That too can be considered a little spot for you to create a little bit of gardening. And even if gardening's not your thing, Get some big pots, put some boxwood in it, you know, add Get some, some hanging interest. baskets over your entranceway. Yeah. Just little things to, to keep you in. Mm-hmm, I think so. And then, you know, you've even done a nice job with that in this garden room. You know, we keep yes. talking about these lovely mm -hmm. standards or topiary mm -hmm. treats that you guys have yeah. added here. This is a hydrangea. Yep, yep, a gorgeous and hydrangea. And it's doing very well mm -hmm. for its age, and I think part of the reason is mm -hmm. Tracy gets nice south uh, sun here yes. and there's no northerly winds to get it. It's nice and protected. It, it really is. But it's a beautiful height yeah, it for is. this space. Yes, I love it in here and I think we needed it because we've got this very tall wall in our right. house. Behind it we've added um, these wonderful trellises, cedar trellises on the wall. And we kind of did, you know, double sets and just let them naturally age. Yes. Um, and then, you know, we have roses in the summer that grow up, not quite high enough yet, but they'll there. get there. You know, they're getting there. And then the standards back here are so pretty. Um, these are the willow. Um, the Japanese, the Japanese willows. willows. Yeah. And Sarah and I both love these. They're just so pretty. You have to trim the heck out of them, but they are really beautiful. And they get um, a beautiful blush of pink, usually yeah. in about May. They're really yeah. neat, very oriental looking. And then I want to point out behind here another little bit of architecture that we added are these garden gates on both sides. So these are just vintage gates, and this is another great way to get a little bit of interest oh, in we, your garden. We love it because, you know, sometimes, again, you want to pick up things on the fly. You don't have to have a big, perfect plan with them. And I see yeah. that you guys have just simply leaned them against the house. Yeah, we did. There's no, so nothing fancy So they're still about. portable, which is good for you mm -hmm. because I know you're all about change. Yeah. Right, girls, uh, change. We love to yeah, swap it out. Yeah. And they allow you to have visual interest without mm -hmm. it being a big commitment. They really do. And so that's, you know, another thing to think about if you're if you're going, you know, flea marketing or that kind of stuff, if you can find interesting elements to put in your garden, you know, a fountain is wonderful. I love a water element. I know it Sarah has I cannot wait to take you to Sarah's yard because it's so crazy charming but water elements it's are important. It's so relaxing and soothing mm -hmm. you know you're just I think as humans as women we're just drawn into yeah. it. It, 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 is it just lets you just kind of be in the yeah. moment and I know you say that your ducks. The ducks come out here every morning and every afternoon and they you know fritter around in the water and they climb in it and they drink it so every day I kind of have to muck it out a little bit because you know the it's ducks nice. are messy but I love them so much when they come I can look down our bedroom window and I see them down here quacking and that wonderful stuff. So cute yeah I love that little critters come in here it's fun and yeah. I see you've got another little water source here I a little bird this. bath yep it's a little bird bath in the winter we pile it with um, bird seed yep. or I'll make a big big junky pile of suet out of peanut butter and you know just kind of nuts some goodness. and junk and slop it in there and the it gives the bird something and then we have this darling little bird feeder um that is really you know it doesn't hold a lot of bird seed but it's so pretty and it gives that other little layer it's of charming it's, it's charming. charming and then yeah. trace we have to talk about it um you do such a nice job with architectural elements that feel a little bit salvaged mm -hmm. or discovered, mm -hmm. and you tuck them in. You know, you've got this mm -hmm. darling vintage sundial. Well, it is. This is from Sarah. Long time ago. <laughs> but you, you've you got him yeah. just nestled into the mulch. Yes, yes, I love, I love those kind of pieces. And it's not too obvious. You know, it could get a little too much if you added. But really, amazingly, once things start to grow up, they kind of disappear in you know, in all of the wonderful greens yes. and the flowers and everything. Yes, it becomes a little bit more of, you know, a hidden treasure. And that's what I love about your herb garden. You've got this wonderful urn over here. Yeah, this that, has been, um, this little urn is actually made out of plaster. And what I love about oh, it is I've got to touch it. These, they have them at garden centers and stuff. And they're usually kind of in funky, interesting shapes. But what's great about them is the weather eats away at them so beautifully, and then they get all mossy and stuff. It almost looks like it's an old like a piece ruin. of salt. Isn't it? I that, know, it's you know, so cool. It's but wonderful. It's got to be a good 10 years old now, and it gets better. They sort of melt away, and I love that about them. Right. So they're just plaster, so keep your eyes open for that. I have a cool one over in my other garden. Oh, of the woman. Of the woman, yeah. I love having cloches in the garden. It's so pretty. I really don't use this cloche in a um, literal way yeah, yeah I don't but um, but I like how Frenchy they are and then I love the idea in a garden room love of a, a place 
to, to sit. sit. Whether or not you use it, it, it draws it in. It again creates it, that, that room, idea of space. That room. It's and you use it, this darling lead planter. Yeah, my mother-in-law gave me that and I love it. So I'll usually, you know, plunk something interesting in that that can kind of come down. Something colorful, maybe an annual or something. A pop of yes. color, right, exactly. It's kind of, you know, that's what's interesting. And then I love the architecture of a stone wall. I this do too. Again, John it's our built. European fantasy. <laughs> it's our European fantasy. And when I was pregnant with Max and Finn, John built the stone wall around our garden. That's always been my fantasy. So, um, you know, you can add little elements like that, whether it's this kind of stone. Which is very casual. Which is super casual or something like that. I love the high A little low. bit more formal. Yeah, you know, that's an interesting thing about garden is. too, is if you have... Um, you know, bits of symmetry are cool, and then that piece that kind of throws it all off is really interesting. To both of us, I think we like that. It just It's just like dressing or decorating or cooking. It's the same thing, yeah. and we progress as we go. You know, again, we always tell you guys, don't feel a great obligation to build the garden room all in one season. No. How exhausting. We don't have I, the time to I do that. Even, yeah, I mean, if you it's had a progression. endless amounts of money, you could sure. probably do it. But, you but know. it's a progression, and that's what's so exciting about it. You know, we were talking with your parents this week, and mm -hmm. I said, you know, Annette, are you guys done? And she said, oh, never. Never. <laughs> and that's the answer I love, because all of a sudden it gives you the freedom to know that, yes, it's okay to keep adding, fiddling yeah. around. Like your house, like your wardrobe, yes. with anything. And, you know, every, you, you and I are constantly realizing you know, at certain points in our life, we had, uh, you know, we didn't have kids, so we spent all our free time gardening, and so we create these huge right, gardens. Right, 12 hours a maintenance. day. Now we're constantly saying to each other, oh, we need to add more shrubs and more boxwoods and things that are a little bit lower maintenance than all the perennials. So, you know, it's a learning thing, and a little garden room like this is a learning thing, too. It's, it is. It's just adding your little layers, and more than anything, just enjoying the process of it and standing back. Isn't that your favorite thing? Love like it. Backing up and kind of going, yeah, I like that. Or, oh, I need to do this. Or you find yes. a picture or you and I see something. Yes. Or through the through the progression of the season, it might look great at one point, and then you get a month down the road and you go, wow. What a mess. I don't like it now. So, you know, it's it's always an evolution, and that's what yeah. we love about it. Oh, and we absolutely. have to talk about, yes. quickly, uh, this is going to go undergo a great change. We're going to have a little facelift in my garden. Um, Yes, John and I are going to move the herbs to our raised bed vegetable garden. And we'll do a different video and show you guys show all you. that. But I want this to become a boxwood garden because you know, ooh, it's that is my favorite thing. thing. Yes, her t-shirt should just say box boxwood. Boxwood. <laughs> so whether or not you have a garden or you yearn to have elements of a garden, there's a way to fit this into your life because that little bit of nature and green and that architecture. It's soul food. It is soul food. Yes. Good for all of us. Get outside and enjoy it. Thanks for joining us, guys.